Welcome to the second lecture of the first week. We are going to talk about the combinatorial analysis today. So especially we're going to talk about the formulas, how to evaluate the combinations and permutations. And on the basis of all of these formulas is the fundamental counting rules. So before we talk about the fundamental counting rules, I would like to emphasize the importance of the combinatorial analysis in calculating of the probabilities. So the many probability problems are based on the counting problems. So for example, so there are four letters, P, A, P, A, and what is the probability that one year old kid will assemble the word Papa? So especially what I, what I should do is, so I need to basically figure out the number of the ways of rearranging of these four letters. And the number of the ways of rearranging of these four letters is six, so especially. So here are all of the possible ways, AAPP, PAPA, or PPAA, and so on. And when we evaluate the probability of assembling just one out of the six possible ways, what we need to do is we just need to divide one over six. So you see, so um, it's, you don't need to, in general, to figure out or write down all of the possible ways in order to evaluate the probability. So what you need to know is, you just need to know that all of the possible ways is equal to the six. So that's why you need to know the combinatorial analysis. And again, so if you would like to know what is the number of the, so you see, so if, in order to evaluate the probability, you need to know the total number of the rearrangements of this word. And you don't need to write down all of the rearrangements in order to know what it is. So you know that this is equal to the six because of the combinatorial analysis. So that's why it is important for us to learn this. So the, all of the combinatorial formulas are based on this fundamental counting rule, which basically tells you that, hey, if one event can happen in m different ways, and another one can happen in n different ways, then all together, this t event, the number of the ways this t events can occur is in a sequence is equal to the m times the z. So let me give you a small example. So there are six flavors of an ice cream, and there are three different cones where we can put this ice cream. So how many different single scoop ice creams can be altered, right? So you can, for example, uh, so let's assume that, let, let me draw the different type of the cones. So there are, for, for example, they are different because of their sizes. So there is like, like a cone like this. There is another cup like this. And maybe there is a, a bigger cup. So what you can do is, for each of these cups, you can put uh, six different flavors of the ice cream, right? So here there is six. Here the six different ice creams can be put. And here the six different ice creams can be put. So all together, you can order six times to the three or 18 different single scoop ice creams. So this is what does it mean, the fundamental counting rules. So it basically tells you that, hey, so if one event can happen in six different ways, and if another one can happen in three different ways, then all together they can happen in 18 different ways. So let's do a couple of more uh, examples on calculating this kind of probability problems. So let's say you're buying a new car and there are two body styles, a sedan or a hatchback. So, and there are also five different colors available for each of the cars. So I just would like to know how many different options are available in the store where you would like to buy the car. Okay. So you go to the store and there are obviously five different sedans, right? So because there are five different colors and there are five different hatchbacks. So in total, there are 10 different cases. And again, so if one event can happen in two different ways, if another one can happen in five different ways, then all together in a sequence, they can have in 10 different ways. So what I always do in order to, uh, in order to solve this kind of problems is to draw uh, boxes. So I always draw the boxes in order to solve this kind of problems. So here, what you need to do is you need to create the settings of your car, right? And I usually put the boxes. I usually put the two boxes where the, in the first place, I need to choose the body type. Then on the second place, I need to choose the color. So the type and in the second place, I need to choose the color. 
Okay. Then what I usually do is I usually uh, write down the number of the ways of a uh, number of the uh, possible ways of filling each of the boxes. So there are two different possible ways of filling the first box. It is like a two and and two. And there are five different possible ways in order to fill the second box with the colors. Then altogether, that is going to be like a two times to the five, which is equal to the ten. So let's do a couple of examples on on usage of this fundamental com fundamental counting rule. So what are the number of the combinations of your user ID when there are seven digits? And each of the digits can take the numbers, the values from zero to the nine. So let's assume that university would like to sign an ID card for every student and employee. And every ID can contain seven digits. And I just would like to know how many different IDs can be generated. So ID numbers can be generated. So in order to do this, again, I would like to create boxes. So the number of the places, the number of the boxes for your ID is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each of the seven cells can contain 10 different options, right? So the digits from zero, the values from zero to the nine. So the 10 to here on the first place, 10 to here on the second place, and so on. So until the end, we've got just 10. And in total, it's going to be 10 in the power of seven possible ways, okay? So this, please know that this, uh, so this 10 in the power of seven includes the zero, 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 all zero ID, which probably might not exist, right? So probably the number of the ID cards can be created as 10 in the power of seven minus one, because we need to exclude that case with all of the zeros. Or for example, your house code uh, consists five digits. So each digit can be from zero to the nine, and for example, if, uh, if, there is, if there is someone who would like to uh, break your security system, so how many different combinations of the code at maximum he should try? So again, we need to create boxes. So in this case, I'm going to create five boxes. So one, two, three, four, five. Then each of the box can contain 10 different options, right? So I can put the numbers here on the first place. From 0 to the 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And for the second one, I can do again 10 different options and so on. So altogether, there are 10 in the part of 5 different combinations of the code which can be tried. Okay, so we can generalize this rule, but not only just two events, but for any number of the events. So if you've got like a sequence of the events, if R basically experiments, if one can happen in n one different ways, if the second one can happen in n two different ways, and so on, in general, the number of the ways that all of the events can happen in the sequence is going to be just the multiplication. So, so this is the generalized version of the, pro, the of the of the theory. So previously we used to have just the two, but it works obviously for any number of the any number of the boxes. A university committee consists of four undergraduate, five graduate, and seven professors, and two non-university persons. So a subcommittee of four people, consisting of one person from each category, should be chosen. So how many different subcommittees can be created? Okay, so, so the subcommittee, again, should contain four boxes, right? Four members, so that's why we have to create four boxes, one, two, three, four boxes, okay? So now let's assume that for the first place, I can choose only the undergraduates. On the second place, I can choose the graduates. On the third place, I can choose the professors. And at the last, I can choose the non-university persons, okay? So this is going to be my boxes. So for each of the seats, I can choose one person from each of the category. So how many different possibilities I can choose for the first seed? So there are four undergraduates, so I can choose one of them, right? So there are four different options. So here on the second place, there are five different options. On the third place, there are seven different options. On the last place, there are two different options. 
So in total, it's going to be just the multiplication of all of these numbers. So it is going to be 20 times to the 14, or simply 280. So there are 280 different subcomedies can be created by just using um, all of this 11, 18 people. Okay. Here it is shown the solution. Okay, so let's do uh, the problem a little bit in a different or uh, a little bit different problem. So could you please arrange the following events in chronological order? So basically, which happened first, then the second, third, and fourth. The Microsoft announced Windows or the group of developers at Bell produces Unix invention of floppy disk or print and page developed the Google search engine. So do you know the answer? Do you know the answer? So, I think... Oh, uh, for, for example, me, I, I, I don't know the answer at all. So, but I would like to guess the answer, okay? So if I would guess the answer, what is the probability that I will guess this correctly? So do you remember in the beginning we discussed that, hey, if you would like to calculate the probability, right? So you need to know how many different possible ways of guessing the answer exist. Then you're going to choose just one of them, right? So it's going to be one of them is correct. So in order to evaluate basically probability that I will guess the answer correctly, I need to figure out how many different possibilities uh, exist. So what I, what I should do is I need to just answer like a four letters, right? A, B, C, D, or A, B, like a D, C, and so on. So I need to have the four boxes again. So we need to have four boxes. One, two, three, four. So how many possible ways I can, how many possible letters I can choose for the first box? Four, right? I can choose like A or B or C or D. So any of the letters can be placed on the first place. For example, like an A, so there are four different options that is possible to do. So let's assume that now you choose one of the options to be at the first. For example, it is A, or it can be B or C or D, doesn't matter. If you choose one of them, um, if you choose one of them, then you cannot choose this for the second place, right? So it doesn't matter what you choose on the first place, the number of the possible ways to be chosen for the second place is equal to the three. For example, if you choose the A for the first place, then there are only three options are left for the second place. If you choose the B for the first place, there are again three possible ways to the second place, and so on. So you see, so it doesn't matter what you choose for the first place, there will be three options for the second. And if you choose, no matter what you choose for the second place, there are two options for the third. No matter what you choose for the third place, there is only one option, okay? So again, the idea of calculating the number of the, the combinations or number of the permutations is to create a boxes and then just calculate the number of the possible ways for each of the box. Then at the end, we just need to multiply those numbers. So in this case, we just need to multiply four to the three, to the two, to the one, and that's going to be 12 times the 2, which is going to be 24. So the probability that I'm going to find, I'm going to guess correct answer is 1 over 24 because only one of them is true. So there are 24 different options. There are 24 different rearrangements of this group, right? So you see, so it appears the number of the rearrangements here of these four letters, actually, is equal to the four factorials because of this box system. Because in the first place, you need to choose like a, uh, so in general, if you would have n different events, then the number of the rearrangements would be n factorial, right? Because on the first place of your box, you can put n items. On the second place, you can put n minus one items. Then on the third place, n minus two items, and so on until one. So it is always going to be n factorials. Cool. So during the summer, you're planning to visit three Asian cities of Uzbekistan, Samarkand, Bukhara, or Hiva. So how many different routes, routines can be created? So what do you think? There are three cities. So how many different routines? So when I say routine, like you, you can visit first Hiva, then Bukhara, then Samarkand. This is the first routine. 
or Samarkand, Bukhara, and Kiva. Three factorials, right? So what you need to do is, so here the order is important, right? If I put, for example, Samarkand, Bukhara, Kiva, it is going to be different than Bukhara, Samarkand, Kiva, right? Because like it depends on which city you visit first, second, and third. Okay, so again, this is the problem of rearranging of the three items with their places. So you can solve this with the you can solve this problem again with the boxes. So what you need to do is you need to create the three boxes. Okay, so you can choose one of these items into the first place. So there are three different possibilities. But if you choose one of them, then there is only two possibilities on the second place, and only one possibility on the third place. And you see, it's going to be three factorial here again. So all of these possibilities, the list of all of these possibilities are shown to here, right? There are six possible ways. Okay, so this is again the factorial if you are going to simply rearrange them. Or sometimes, so you have n items, but you need to choose some of them. For example, I can say uh, that there are 12 regions of Uzbekistan, but you, can, you need to visit only five of them, okay? So what you need to do now is, to calculate the number of the routines when you choose five items, five CDs, out of 12. So previously, if I just give you the list of five CDs, and if I say, you, hey, could you please tell me the number of the rearrangements, you simply say that it's going to be five factorial. Now I'm giving you the list of 12 CDs. So now I'm asking you, hey, choose any five, first of all, then tell me how many different ways you can visit this five. Or the problem is, you need to choose any five. Okay? So at the first glance, this problem uh, sounds complicated. But once you make the boxes, it becomes, again, much more easier. So let's create the boxes. So what you need to do is, at the end, is to present me the routine, your routine. Right? So how this list should look like? It should look like just the names of five cities. So you would like to visit this city first. This city second, the city third, fourth, and fifth, right? So your your answer, your final answer, should look like just simply five boxes. One, two, three, four, five boxes. Okay. So if there are twelve cities, so you can choose one of them to be visited, uh, to be visited on the first place. So there are twelve options for the first. Then if you choose, if you decided to choose one of them then there are obviously one less option. So you cannot choose 12 again to here because you already chose one of them on the first place. And it doesn't matter what you choose for the first place, the number of the ways for the second is going to be 11, then it's going to be 10, 9, and 8. Okay? So if you would need to rearrange all of the 12 items, it would be 12 factorial. But if you need to rearrange only 5 of them, it's going to be simply the multiplication of the 12 by by and then like 11 10 9 and 5 just five of them okay so can you figure out the formula here so if you are given 12 and 5 so how 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 you can figure out the formula so 12 factorial divided to the five factorials or no sorry 12 minus 5 factorial, right? 12 minus 5 factorials. So in this case, 12 factorial divided to 7 factorials, right? Because if you now divide this, you're going to get exactly this multiplication. 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8, okay? And that's going to be our formula. So we are going to call this as the permutations formula. But essentially, if you've got like n items, and we the the unordered arrangement of p distinct objects is called the permutations. So the number of the ways of ordering n distinct objects taken from the p can be calculated using this way. Okay. So again, so you would like to uh, you you've got n objects. You need to choose p of them. Choose p of them. And then rearrange. And then rearrange. Okay, then it is going to be calculated using this formula. So please know that this formula is going to be a little bit different than the formula of the combination. So later on, we're going to discuss this. So the main difference is going to be the when you choose the same objects. So 
So A, B, C, then the number of the rearrangements, if you rearrange those objects, uh, it is going to create the new possibilities, okay? So the A, B, C is going to be different than C, B, A, even though both of these combinations contain the same objects, okay? So the rearrangement is important here. Order is important. So later on, we will see another formula where the order is not important anymore, okay? So here, you're choosing some items and then you're rearranging them, okay? So there'll be huge possibility of calculations. So let's say uh, the names of three employees are to be randomly drawn without replacement. So without replacement means that we choose the name of the first name, so, and then we don't put this uh, name back into the drum, okay? So, uh, into the bowl, sorry. So there are 30 employees in a small company. We put the names of all of the employees into the bowl. We, uh, we run this, and then we're going to choose some of the three names, okay? So the first place is going to receive $100, the second place of $50, and the third place $25. Uh, and how many sample points are associated with this experiment? So it's essentially how many different results we can create. Okay. For example, employee one, two, three are going to receive 100, 15, 25 co correspondingly. Or even you choose the three employees, three names, there are three different rearrangements of each of the three choices, right? Do you understand this? There are 30 employees. You should first choose any three. Then for each of the choice of choosing the three, you have six pictorial cases, okay? So in this case, what you need to do, it appears, is you need to divide 30 factorials to say 27 factorials. It is going to be 30 times to say 29 times to say 28. And again, so if you think that this is difficult for you to understand this formula, what you can do is you can draw the boxes again. So you can draw the boxes, so do you remember, at the end of the day, after this experiment, you need to give me the three names, right? So which are coming in the order, because so if you just change the order, it is going to create a new result, because, uh, so because of the prices are different for the three places, okay? So the number of the possibilities for the first place is 30, because there are 30 names, and you can choose one of them. Okay, you, let's assume that you choose one of the names, and, but you don't put this back into the ball. And then there are 29 names, then there are 28 names. Then it's going to be the multiplication. And you see, so we've got the same answer. Okay, so this is what is called the permutation. Um, it is really important for us to know what is a permutation, but uh, there is another formula. Oh, so here, this is uh, one, one important um, case was the permutations as well. So in all of the examples which we've considered previously, so in the example, for example, was the names, so we assume that all of the names or all of the persons, right, are different. There are 30 persons and they, uh, and they are different. But sometimes it is possible that your sequence of N objects might have similar objects, okay? For example, so we've discussed this in the first lecture as well, if, for example, you have four letters, A, A, B, C, then the number of the rearrangements of these four letters is not going to be four factorials anymore. That is going to be four factorials divided to the two factorials because you need to exclude this two, the rearrangement of this two A from all of the cases, right? So I just would like to show you that this two A might come here in the beginning or it might come B, A, A, C, or B, C, A, A, or C, B, A, A, right? So this two A's is going to come in many different ways. So we are going to exclude all of them. So that's why we're going to divide. So if you just subtract, it means that you're subtracting this from all, only one of the cases. So that's why you have to divide this because you're going to subtract this from, uh, extract this from all of the other cases. So the example is going to be like this. So let's consider the sample problem. So how many ways, 11, uh, 11 girls and three boys be arranged in a sequence? Okay, so when the rearrangement of the two boys is being considered the same. So ba basically, I'm just saying, hey, so you've got like a one, two, three boys, then one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven letters of the G. 
Okay, there are 10. Then there are 11 letters of the G. Okay, so I'm just asking you, hey, so there are 11 girls and three boys, and how many different ways they can be rearranged in one sequence. Okay, in a line, let's say. So again, so it's going to be like, in total, there are 14 different letters, right? Or 14 different boys, uh, uh, p p uh, kids, right? Kids. Then what we can do is, so the, we have to divide 14 factorial into the 3 factorial because there are 3 similar um, items, right? Then we have the additional divide us to the 11 factorials because there are 11 more similar items, okay? So the number of the rearrangements of the 3 boys and the 11 girls is going to be equal to this number. So please note that when 2 girls are changing their places, it is going to be considered the same sequence, okay? Cool. So now it is really important for us to know this formula. So the combination is a selection of the p objects from the group of n things when the order does not important. So essentially, now previously you've got 12 cities, right? And you needed to choose five, then you needed to rearrange them because you would like to visit, you would like to know exactly how you would like to visit in those five cities. So now if I just change the problem a little bit, and if I say, hey, could you please choose me? Could you please just give me the list of five cities? And I don't care how you're going to visit them. The first Samarkand, Bukhara, or Bukhara, Samarkand. I don't care. They just give me the list of five cities. So in this case, you need to use the formula of the combinations. Okay? So let's do an example. Uh, oh, so I'm, I'm just going to sh sh uh, solve the problem. So if there are 12 cities, and if I ask you, just give me the 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 uh, so there are 12 cities and if i just ask you give me the list of five cities okay and the number of the list you can create is going to be like this so again so the easy way to memorize this formula is 12 goes up then 5 goes down then additionally you have to multiply this to the 12 minus 5 factorial so it's going to be 12 minus 1 factorials 5 factorials is 7 factorial okay that is going to be like this so now let's do a, a, a more interesting problem. So a clinical trial, clinical test on humans of new drug is done in three phases. And phase one is conducted with a relatively small number of the healthy volunteers. So let's assume that, the, the, that we want to treat eight healthy humans with a new drug and we have 10 suitable volunteers available. So we would like to just choose eight out of 10, okay? So now, if the subjects are treat, selected and treated in a sequence so that the trial is discontinued, so how many different sequences, uh, sequential arrangements are possible? So basically, what I'm saying now is that so there are 10 students here, okay? So what I have to do is I need to choose eight of them. But then how I'm going to treat this, uh, this new drug is like this. So I'm going to treat this on the first student, okay? And if everything is okay, okay, then after this, I'm going to treat this with the second student. And if everything is okay with the second student, I'm going to treat this with the third student and so on. Okay? Then obviously, so being treated first or second is different, right? For example, student A and then student B is different than student B and then student A. Okay? The rearrangements are different. So in this case, the answer is going to be equal to the permutations, right? Because there are like um, 10 objects and you have to permute eight of them. So again, so the formula works in this way that 10 goes up, then uh, 10 minus eight goes down. So 10 minus eight goes down. So it's gonna be two factorials, okay? So this is like a 10 times to the nine, okay? So we can change this problem a little bit. And we can say that, hey, so what if, if eight of the subjects are selected and treated at the same time? So now there are 10 students. I'm going to choose any eight of them, and I'm going to give them the drugs at the same time, and they can take this at any time they wish. There is no sequence that the first one should take the first, then the second, and so on. So they can take this at any time. So they can even take this at the same time, okay? So it doesn't matter. So in this case, obviously, the, uh, the, 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 the order is not important. So how you would put this, right? So it's going to be like combinations of the 10 of 8. So it's going to be 10 factorials divided to the 8 factorials divided to the 2 factorials. 
Okay, so in this case, it's going to be combination. So let let me explain you with a smaller example of the difference of the combinations and permutations. So let's say you've got four letters A, B, C, D. All of them are different. Okay, so if I say, hey, could you please choose two of these letters? Okay, and then tell me the number of the rearrangements where the order is important. Okay, but in this case, you need to choose. Are the permutations formula. So the permutations formula is going to be P for T. It is four factorials divided to the two factorials only. It's going to be three times to the four, which is twelve. Okay. So please note that in this case, if you choose, for example, two letters A and B, you're going to have two options. But if you choose, for example, any other two letters like A and D or C and D, always you're going to have two options. But for the combinations, if I say, hey, just choose any two options. Well, the order is not important. Then for this four letters, the number of the combinations, it's going to be C for T, right? C for T is equal to the four factorials divided to the two, two factorials. It's going to be six. It is obviously going to be two times smaller than the number of the permutations. The reason is if you choose A and B, okay? It is going to be the same as B and A. It is going to be the same as B and A. So that's why the number of the cases is going to be two times smaller. Okay. Cool. So here are the most important formulas for the combinatorial analysis, like the permutations and the combinations. So in our next lectures, we are going to discuss about some problems on solutions of the permutations and combinations. And also we're going to use, we are going to discuss the usage of these formulas and calculating and evaluating the probabilities.